this year. Acts chapter 20. Last week we, we looked at being a servant. And that's from verse 19. Acts 20 verse 19. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. That's really, as Christians, that's who we are. Servants of the Lord. That's, if we don't understand that, we don't really understand the, the, the part, at least part of our relationship uh, with our Savior. Then today we want to look at, at verse 20. Um, how, I, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. I want to look this week at uh, the, the testimony that we have, the example that we are. Uh, Paul said, I, I showed you. He didn't just tell them. He showed them. Uh, verse 20, he says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a message, and it, it comes from our life. You know, when, when you talk to people about the Lord, if they know you, they're thinking about who you are. Uh, your testimony has something to say. Uh, I think it was a song or something that used to go, uh, what you are speaks so loud that the world can't hear what you say. <laughs> uh, sometimes our testimony gets in the way of our testimony. What did I just say? Uh, sometimes what we are gets in the way of what we want to say. And uh, we, we need to understand that we need to be an example uh, of the believers. People are watching. Doyle and I are really experiencing that with little children in the home. Uh, we'll hear our words come back to us. We'll see our actions uh, put into, into play. And man, it's, it's, uh, it's convicting sometimes. Uh, and people are watching us as, as Christians. For, for some people, you might be the only Christian they know. And they're going to judge Christianity by you. Now, whether that's right or wrong for them to do that is, is not the point. Uh, in, in 1 Thessalonians, he talks to, to that church. And just, I just wanted to read one statement there from 1 Thessalonians. Um, well, no, actually, I want to give you the example that they have in, in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, when people got saved and became part of that church, people noticed because their lives were different. And he, he says there in 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 6, uh, Ye became followers of us and of the Lord, and have received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Uh, they became followers of the Lord. Verse 7, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. They were examples. People said, oh, have you heard about the Christians? Yeah, those Thessalonians, they're Christians. And they were examples. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. You see all the things that were happening in, in those people's lives? Uh, those people were biblical. In verse 6 it says they received the word. Uh, they were joyous even though they were being afflicted. Uh, they had a change of attitude. Uh, they were evangelistic. The word was sounding out. But especially they were changed. People saw there was a difference. Listen, nothing is a better... There's not a much better testimony than a changed life. Right. You know, people see, oh, yeah, he used to lie to me and cheat me. Now he's telling me the truth and, and helping me. Uh, they see a changed life and they say, what's, what's happened? What's going on? Uh, in Titus chapter 2, he says that this example is to be in all things. Uh, that was the one where I wanted to just give you the phrase. Uh, Titus 2 verse 7, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. You know, Christianity isn't just part of our life. It's not something you add to your life. You know, if you picture a pie, it's not just one section of your, the pie of your life. All right? it, it's in all things. I think some people, you know, they kind of, religion's what they do on, on Sunday, and you know, that's, when they, that's when they serve the Lord. No, for Christians, it's everything. Waking, sleeping, working, playing, everything is, is part of our testimony and our example to those around us. Now this morning, I want us to particularly look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Paul is able to say, I showed you. I told you. I gave you testimony, but I showed you. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, talking to a young pastor, Timothy, he says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example 
of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He lists six different things. Now, I'm sure there's probably many more. But he tells them, be an example. You know, one of the best ways to lead is to be an example. And that's what he's saying to Timothy. And that's what the, the Word of God says to us as Christians. Now, his situation, if you look at 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies, and so on. Uh, we live in a deceiving and dying world. And the world needs to see real Christians. Real Christians. There's plenty of religion. I mean, the world is full of religion. Religion won't help you. Christ will. Right. The only time the Bible mentions religion, it says to help the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep us unspotted from the world. That, that's what God says about religion. It's not all these buildings and all, all these rules. and you know, you, Any religion you want, you can find somebody that's they got a building and they're practicing it. God says that we need to be examples of the, of the believers. In uh, verse 7 of 1 Timothy 4, he says, Refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Yeah, there's plenty of things that people say, Oh, you should do, do this, you should do that, uh, you know, for whatever reason. God says, Here's our guide, is God's word. We need to be ex examples to a world that needs, desperately needs, uh, examples of godliness. Now, back to verse 12. One of the things he says to him is, let no man despise thy youth. Now, I haven't had anybody despise my youth lately, but uh, I've had other things. And what I would encourage you to get from that phrase is, don't give in to contempt. Listen, there's people who will hold you in contempt for following Christ. And don't give in to that. For, for Timothy, it was his age. Uh, it can be lots of things. At, at work, it can be your morality. It can be your values. It can be your attitudes, uh, your practices. You know, just to go to church on Sunday. And you mean you go to church three times a week? Wow, what a waste of time. That, you know, they can really hold you in contempt for serving the Lord. Don't give in to that. Be an example of the, of the believers. All we do has to do with our worldview. And your worldview, folks, needs to be based on the Bible. Listen, you watch the news. Um, by the way, you need to classify the news nowadays as entertainment. <laughs> it's not news anymore. It's entertainment. They're trying to scare you. Uh, they, you know, they love a good disaster. And anytime I see the news and there's four people standing there, I, I, I don't watch it. We've got this person here, and this person there, and this person there, and they're going to tell us what's happening there. <laughs> no, they're not. They're just there to, to scare us. And entertain. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that. Uh, don't give in to contempt. Base your worldview on the Bible. Uh, don't, don't give in to the world's view. Have God's view of the world. That's our theme for the year, Acts 2020 vision. We're, we're wanting God to see the world through God's eyes. We're wanting to see the world through, through scriptural glasses. And he then goes on and says to Timothy, keep on being ex an example. That's kind of the thrust of, of the words there. Be thou an example of the believers. Uh, you know, don't stop. Keep doing it. And he mentions six different areas. The first one is in word. You don't need a degree in theology to understand that. That's what you say. <laughs> All right? Uh, we need to be examples of Christ and of believers of the Bible in what we say. Folks, it's important what we say. Words mean things. Now, there's things you can watch on TV that aren't real. But words are real. When somebody swears at you on TV, they're really swearing at you. I have a policy. Anybody swears at me in my home, I turn them off or, or turn them out. Um, I just don't put up with it. Uh, our, our speech is important. And, and our speech should not be uh, the way the world's is. You know, I see sometimes people, they look so refined until they open their mouth. And just such a crude, ungodly, corrupt communication. In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, he uses that expression for us as believers. He says, Ephesians 4, 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Don't let any bad words come out of your mouth. 
And stop and think. You know, I heard somebody the other day say, oh, we had a hell of a time. I thought, what does that mean? They, they were tortured and, and burnt and, and, and lost to God for eternity? No, the devil likes to turn words around and to make hell a good thing. Listen, hell is not a good thing. And Christians should not use it in that way. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And he goes on and says, but that which is good to the use of edifying. That means building up. My personality is to tend to be a little bit sarcastic. I have to resist that. Because I don't want to have humor at the expense of someone else. I want to build them up. Now, there's times when, you know, we say things and we have a, a good time with sarcasm and that, but be careful. Uh, use your words to, to build up, and it says that it may minister grace unto the hearers. We need to have gracious words, good words, kind words. Uh, one of the things I noticed about that passage, the very next verse says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Now, to me, that says, God is listening to what I say. God is listening to what I say. And I don't want by my words to grieve the Lord. God wants us to be an example of the believers in word. One of the other ways that comes up is we not only need to have good words, we need to have bold words. Ephesians 6, um, yeah, 6 and verse 19, he says, And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. We need to be an example of the believers in our words. And there's times when we need to share the gospel. You know, the old saying, silence is golden. Sometimes it's just yellow. <laughs> Sometimes we need to say something. Uh, we need to speak up for what's right. A uh, kid on, on the bus this week saw a woman getting beaten up. He jumped out of the bus and went back and, and rescued her. And that's the right thing. And that's the same with our words, you know. There's times when we need to say something for the Lord. Uh, there's times when we need to be bold. He says, first of all, we need to be an example of the believers in word. Secondly, he says we need to be an example of the believers in conversation. Now, this is one of those words that's kind of changed meanings in the English language. Um, you think of conversation as, you know, you say something, I say something, you say something, I say something. Uh, that's not what it means. It, it means your manner of life, uh, your conduct. Your general you is, is your conversation. Uh, what is your testimony? You know, if somebody was to summarize you and ten words or less, <laughs> what would they say? Oh, he's a really positive guy and, you know, really enjoy being around him. Or would they say, oh, here comes, you know, I can't think of the right word, uh, not greedy guts, uh, com you know, the complainer, the moaner. Uh, you know, what, what's your general testimony that uh, your conversation, how are you known as a person? And we need to be an example of the believers. One of the things I, I pray about every day is that I would know the fruit of the Spirit. You know, that's the way we need to live, with love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. Uh, that's what God wants in our life. Not, not the things that uh, we would naturally go to, but the things that we would supernaturally go to. Uh, in James chapter 3 and, and verse 13, he uses the word conversation. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. God wants you to have a wise life, not foolish. Probably all of us will do something foolish at some time or another. But that shouldn't be the characteristic of our life. And God says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He's got plenty and he'll give it to you freely. Uh, God wants us to be wise. In the next verse says, if you have bitter envy life in your hearts, glory not. Listen, don't live like that. Don't live with, with bitterness. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12, he uses the word conversation. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Our manner of life should be honest. You know, as Christians, we shouldn't cheat. We shouldn't lie. Uh, we shouldn't even cheat the government. Folks, uh, we need to do the right thing. And he says, why? That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. I'm not sure 
all of the things that that means, but the way I picture it is when God knocks on their heart's door, when God begins to deal with them, when God begins to visit with them, they're going to say, oh, I remember talking to, to him. Maybe, maybe he'll know what's going on in, in my heart and life there. Uh, they might have mocked you before, but they're going to say, oh, that's a real Christian. I'll go talk to him. Uh, in, in our life, we need to be wise. We need to be honest. Not, it's not our sameness with the world that gives us our testimony. It's not our sameness with the world. It's our sameness with Christ that gives us our testimony. It, to the world, it's our difference. And as people look at us as Christians, there should be something different as we follow the Lord. Uh, I've seen this happen. People can shun you for living for Christ, but when they need help, you're the one they'll come to because they know that you'll be kind. They know that you'll be honest. They know that you have answers when trouble has come. We need to have a testimony in, in our life. We need to have a, a Christian testimony in our words. We need to be an example. The third one, he says, is charity. Now, that's just the word agape uh, in, in the Greek, the same as in John 3, 16. Uh, For God so loved the world. We need to be like God in sacrificial love. Jesus said in John 13 that it's a, the, the basis of our testimony is our love for each other as Christians. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. We need to be an example in, in charity. In Romans 12, he says it's not to be hypocritical. He says, let love be without dissimulation. It just means not hypocritical. Hip hypocrisy is when you say one thing and do another. <laughs> God says, don't do that. Uh, be real and genuine. Uh, hypocrisy is typical of false religion, by the way. And, and that's not the way we, we want to live. Not just in words. Uh, in, in Titus, he, he says this, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. See, it's easy to say. I, I ask people all the time, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. But their works deny it. Uh, we need to be an example of the believers. Uh, learn what love is from God and then show it to others. Be an example in language, in life, in love. The fourth one he says is spirit. Be an example of the believers in spirit. You know, God doesn't want us to be down in the dumps as Christians. God wants us, he says in Romans 12, 11, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Uh, in the Colossians, he says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Uh, I believe God wants us to be enthusiastic about being Christians and about life in general. Uh, don't let the world take your joy. God gives it to you. Take it with both hands. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You know, uh, we get it from him. Uh, your spirit compelled by God's spirit is what I'm talking about. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, here's a contrast. Ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's the way a lot of people, religious people live. Oh, poor me. <laughs> bondage. I guess I've got to go to church again. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, I, I get it now. Or I come home, Pastor Bill's home, Pastor Bill's home. That's not my wife saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, they're, they're excited. It, boy, that's, that's better than having a dog, you know? I mean, it's wonderful when somebody's excited to see it. And that, God says that's the way our, we should be with the Lord. Well, we don't have to be sad about being Christians. No, we'll have sadness. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, but we shouldn't be sad about our Christian life. We need to be enthusiastic, living and walking in the Spirit. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, enjoying His fruit. One of my favorite verses is 2 Timothy 1.7. Uh, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That helped me when I was a teenager. Uh, I used to do, try and do things for the Lord. And sometimes you know, I'd, I'd go to sing or, or speak or something, and I would literally, my body would shake. <laughs> and it's hard to talk or sing when you're shaking. And a friend of mine shared this verse with, verse with me while we were waiting to sing. <laughs> He showed it to me. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen, that's the way we need to live. We need to be an example of the believer in these things. People need to see that even though we're afraid to do things, we're willing to try it for God when we know it's right. Uh, not in fear. Glorifying God. In Corinthians 6, he, he says, Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Uh, don't spend a lot of time down in the dumps. God describes us in Ephesians 2, 6 as being in the heavenlies. Live there. Live there. And if you don't understand how to do that, ask God to help you understand. God wants us to be an example in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit. And then the fifth thing there in, in 1 Timothy is in faith. Now, we've been looking at this subject on Wednesday nights particularly, and uh, some Sunday nights, and we've seen that faith is a fight. <laughs> uh, the fight of faith, he, he describes it. Uh, I was just look, turning here to 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. Um, and, and our faith is based on God's word. Uh, I probably say this verse every week. It's uh, Romans 10, what is it, 17. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's where our faith is. Uh, we just happened to hear a man being questioned by Congress. You know how you see things on the news and you, well, what's this going on? And, uh, he was being questioned by Congress to be a judge in the United States. He was a Christian man. And uh, the person questioning him didn't like his Christianity. He thought it would make him a bad judge because he believed in things like marriage and you know, stuff like that. And uh, as he was questioning him, the man kept saying, well, I believe that because I'm a Christian. Well, Doyle and I looked at each other and we thought, he needs to be saying, I believe that because God's word says that. I believe the Bible. I have faith in God. Now, we need to be careful that we're not proposing ourselves as the basis of faith, but God's word is the basis of our faith. God wants us to be an example in faith. Uh, Jude wrote in Jude 3, he says, I, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen, there's no new faith. God delivered it once and that was it. He said, here it is. <laughs> we, have, we have God's word. It's complete. It's right. And we can be an example of faith. We need to be. The world needs us to be. God tells us we're to be salt and light. If we won't, it won't happen. We need to be uh, examples of faith in what we believe. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to be unkind about it, but we need to be firm about it. What we believe needs to be important to us because it's God's word. And we need to be an example of faith in what we do. James wrote, uh, let me just read this to you. He says, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there's one God. Faith. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Listen, there's things the devil believes, the same as you. The devil believes in one God. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? We need to know uh, the doctrine, but we also need to put it into practice. That's real faith. Faith without works is dead. Live God's word. And, and if people question it, listen, just tell them. I'm doing that because the Bible tells me so. We sang that song this morning, Jesus loves me, this I know, or the Bible tells me so. That's how we know. The last thing he, he mentions there in, in 1 Timothy, uh, be an example of the believer in purity. We live in a dirty world, don't we? I mean, we really do. Uh, I'm a man. Well, I've, I was a boy. Now I'm a man. Uh, and there's just things that are hard for men right now. Uh, Christian women, help us out. Don't, don't be part of that problem. Uh, you, you aren't. I appreciate that. And I know it's hard for women, too. Purity. It means being clean, uh, being chaste, if you understand that word. Not, not sinning. Uh, Jesus wrote in, in 1 John 2, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. 
Now he writes saying, here's how you live. Don't, don't, don't sin. I'll help you. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. God says, the best you can. Follow me. Uh, be pure in your life. Uh, keep away from the, the dirt of the world. In uh, 1 Peter, he talks about wives uh, having a chaste conversation coupled with fear. Yeah, as Christians, we need to have a, and remember that word conversation means manner of life. Uh, we need to live a pure life. And you know, as Christians, we're, we're going to fail. There's going to be times when we'll, we'll say or, or do the wrong thing. Well, then we have an opportunity to be like Christ in admitting that we were wrong. Now, Christ never had to admit he was wrong, but uh, we can, uh, we can be, do the Christian thing. We can be an example of the believers and saying, listen, I, I was wrong when I said that to you. W will you forgive me? And uh, you know, what a blessing that is. Now, better not to, to say the wrong. Better not to do the wrong. Uh, w the Bible says the wisdom that's from above is first pure. It's James chapter 3, 17. We need to be pure in our lives. We need to be pure in our thoughts. Now, God tells us what to think. He says, uh, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And he says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. That gets back to example, doesn't it? What you've learned and all those things in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Uh, we need to be pure in, in our thoughts and in our words and in our example. And the question I'm asking you this morning is, what is your testimony? What is your testimony? What is your example to others? Someone put it this way. If you were put on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? That's a startling thought, isn't it? You see, our goal is to be like, to be like Jesus. Uh, there's a, a song, I think it's actually in our hymnal, Do Others See Jesus in Me? How will the lost know of Jesus if they cannot see Jesus in me? And that's our goal. Our goal is to be like Jesus. Be an example of the believers. Part of our testimony is what we do. The other part is what we say, sharing, sharing God's word with people. You know, Paul was able to say, be followers of me. That, that's, a, that's a pretty bold statement, isn't it? Someone, I remember hearing some preacher say, if someone can't be like you and be like Jesus, why not? <laughs> and I, Ooh, we need to, to think about that. Well, Paul later says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye also followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. See, that's the key. Following Jesus every day by day. Uh, the key is, what would Jesus do? Would others see Jesus in me? In Philippians chapter 3, he talks about our, our, our citizenship. He uses the word conversation. Let me get it here. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Our conversation is in heaven, from, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, our manner of life, that, that word there actually is a different word, and it actually means citizenship. Our citizenship is in heaven. That should be our example. You ever see somebody walking along and they're not dressed like an Australian? You know, they got some weird outfit on or something? Well, it's because they're from somewhere else, usually. <laughs> or they're going to a fancy dress party. Uh, you know, their, their citizenship is somewhere else. So that's, that's their characteristic. Well, listen, we don't have to apologize for being from somewhere else. And I don't mean another earthly country. Our citizenship's in heaven. And that's not bad, folks. That's good. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, what's the old song? Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. But uh, we need to make sure where our citizenship is. Jesus said in John 1, 12, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. God wants you to be his child. He wants you to be a, a citizen of heaven. And uh, only he can, can change your life and change your heart to make that happen. It's by faith, faith in God and in his word. Uh, have you trusted Christ as your savior? 
He says, our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior. Are you looking for your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? I hope so. If not, this morning you can trust Christ as your Savior. He, he's uh, available to all, unto all and upon all them that believe. What a blessing it would be. If you've never trusted Christ as Savior, make today the day. March the 1st. Uh, that would be a, a good day to get saved if, if you're not. Let's go to him in prayer this morning. Heads bowed and eyes closed. And maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe you're a Christian, but you've not been the example that you should be. Now you can, the Lord can sort that out. Maybe this morning you, you don't know Christ as your Savior. You're not sure if you died, whether you'd go to heaven or hell or, or what would happen. The Bible says you can know. That he's written these things that you may know that you have eternal life. And today could be the day. Father, we're so grateful that you know us and love us. And Lord, you've given us your word. You've kept it safe and we can know the truth and the truth can make us free. And Lord, I pray if there are those this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would draw them and convict them. And, and Lord, that they would turn to you in, in faith and repentance. God, help us as Christians to live for you. Help us to put aside the things of the world. Help us not to be ashamed and not to worry about the world's contempt, but Lord, to look for your well done. God bless us and help us and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take our, our song books and go to page 468. It's the song, Without Him I Could Do Nothing. Page 468. I'll, I'll be down here at the front.